action. That was useful, right? That was super useful. Yeah, I know, I've done this before. So today we're gonna to talk about six indoor training tips. I do a lot of turbo training, so I wanna give you six things that I do to help me ride better, ride more comfortable, and ultimately enjoy sitting on a turbo for longer. Number one, cooling and ventilation. You always overheat on a turbo trainer. So make sure you position your setup somewhere where you've got the ability to open a large window or a door outside or some really, really strong fans. There's loads of options out there in terms of fans that you can buy on Amazon, for example. And a little tip which I found out yesterday is about using a smart plug to be able to control the speed of the fan. Make sure you're really blowy. If you think about it, when you're riding indoors, you don't have a consistent breeze from what you would have riding outdoors. So have a way of cooling yourself using a fan. It will make it much more comfortable and ultimately it's going to allow you to control your heart rate better and not ruin yourself. Number two. Going on the route of comfort, make sure you do things like stand up more when you're on the turbo trainer. If you think about when you're riding outside, so often you'll get out the saddle, you'll get off at traffic lights, for example, you go around a bit more on a bike. Now, when your bike is on a, a turbo trainer, it's way more held in place, it's way more static, and you tend to be sitting in the same position the whole time. Now, get out the saddle, you know, if you're going up a hill, using a program like Zwift or something, just get out the saddle as if you were actually climbing. Another big thing that really helps with it is using chamois cream. Now chamois cream is basically cream that smells quite nice and it helps reduce friction. A lot of runners use it for running to sort of help with any kind of anti-chafing and I'm a big believer that when you're cycling, just use chamois cream to help with that anti-chafing. Tip number three. There are many different types of turbo trainers on the market. Tax make a variety of different turbos at different price points, from direct drive turbo trainers to rollers to non-direct drive turbo trainers. A non-direct drive turbo trainer is effectively a turbo where you still have the rear wheel on the bike. A direct drive turbo trainer is one where you remove the rear wheel and effectively the bike is mounted to the turbo trainer. The cassette is installed on the turbo trainer and this kind of setup is way more efficient in terms of power transfer and recording data. A direct drive turbo trainer will often have a built-in power meter, so if you're using one of the apps out there for training, you can quite easily get all your power data, your cadence data coming from the turbo trainer. Of course, direct drive turbo trainers are more expensive than a non-direct drive turbo trainer. Another option you could look at is rollers. But rollers, in my opinion, are a whole different skill set in its own right. You get a lot of track riders and cyclocross riders will use rollers to warm up on. They work on the basis of basically really high cadence, so it's very good for warming up. But you have to be able to balance very well, which I can't do. If you've got the ability to, I would definitely look at a direct drive turbo trainer because of the fact that it's way more efficient, you're not wearing out a tire or a wheel or anything, and effectively you're gonna be able to get all your power, cadence, and useful information when you're training. Number four kind of relates to number three, and it's about smart trainers. So you have dumb trainers and smart trainers. Sounds really self-explanatory. But basically, a smart trainer is one that will be able to connect via Bluetooth or AMT Plus to a laptop or a TV, depending on how you're training or even into your Garmin bike computer. This means that that smart trainer can take your workout that you're planning to do and basically control the trainer. So you don't have to worry about changing gear to increase or decrease how hard the pedal is. If you're using a program like Zwift or Ruby, a smart trainer can also respond to the gradient and the surface in the program you're using. So in Zwift, for example, when it's really rough and bumpy, tax trainers will actually start to shake a little bit. You can turn this feature off though if you don't like it. Number five, please just fuel your turbo sessions. There's a real thing about underfueling, and I personally don't understand it. When you're riding on the turbo, quite often you're actually working harder than you would be outside. Think about it when you're riding outside, you can free will. You can't do that on a turbo trainer. It's always consistently providing you resistance unless you literally get off and stop pedaling. 
So please fuel your workouts appropriately. And what I mean by that is by taking on carbohydrates. It could be in the form of carbohydrates which you add into your water bottle, it could be gels, it could be bars. But using these kind of products will allow you to keep yourself fueled and hydrated and be able to basically train harder and be able to get fitter. British Cycling's recommendation is one gram of carbohydrate to one kilogram of body weight. It's a very loose basis and we're seeing some of the pro teams are now using 130 grams of carbohydrates now an and on the same side some people might be only able to take on 40, 50, 60 grams of carbs an hour. But just make sure you're fueling your sessions appropriately and leading on to fueling, get salt in the body. You can get salt tablets like these ones from Sturka. These are 500 milligrams of salt per tablet, which is quite substantial. When you're on the turbo, you will sweat a lot. Therefore, you'll be getting rid of a lot of salt and getting dehydrated quickly. So pop a salt tablet in your water bottle. Hydrate, eat, salt. That's the three things to take from that. Lastly, number six, that's five. Lastly, number six, make sure you're having fun with what you're doing training wise. Personally, I think using programs like Zwift and Ruby are a great way to make indoor training way more fun and way more accessible. You can race, you can train using their inbuilt training things. You can also use a Garmin head unit to basically control your workout. So if you say, for example, have a coach and you're working in training peaks or you're using Garmin's pre-selected workout selector thing, sounded kind of good. If you're using Garmin's pre-selected workout selector, you can select your workout on your Garmin head unit and then that will work with the turbo trainer to control the resistance for that workout. But ultimately, just have fun with it. Do whatever works for you and enjoy the experience of training and allowing yourself to get stronger over the winter. If you have any other tips or things you do when you're riding on a turbo trainer, please drop them in a comment so other people can read those comments. Thanks for watching this video. See you later. Peace. That's the end song. Yeah. <laughs>